This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shoutouts, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. The NFL playoffs are officially over. And what that means is that we are now at the point to where we can start to really look at next year. But before we get engrossed with what next year can be and talking about next year, I want to talk about the Super Bowl and what I saw in the playoffs, what that means for the Cleveland Browns going forward, in my opinion. Now, I do walk away from the playoffs with a lot of good news for the Cleveland Browns. I think a lot of the teams that have been pillars of the Super Bowl conversation have seen their best days. I think that this year was the best run that you're going to get out of the Baltimore Ravens for a number of reasons. One, I think this was a right year, right time. They have some guys, some key free agents, Justin Matabuke, one of them. Um, and also, I feel like this was just the right time for Lamar Jackson, where things were going to line up. Now, that doesn't mean that the Ravens aren't going to be a good football team or aren't going to contend for the division. They absolutely are. But I think that this was the Ravens' best punch. Every other punch that they have left in this iteration of them is not going to be as strong as the punch that they had this year. I can say the same thing, in my opinion, is true for the Buffalo Bills. I think this was pretty much it for that iteration of them. Not that they're going to be a bad team. They're still going to have Josh Allen. They're still going to have some talented guys on that roster. But they're not going to be a more serious threat than they were this year going forward. On the NFC side, I'm not sure if we've seen the last of the Philadelphia Eagles, but they're definitely in a complex place. You could say the same thing with the San Francisco 49ers. Now, Brock Purdy still has a couple years under that rookie deal. Um, they have some really good defensive players, but it just felt like this was the best shot that San Francisco is going to have at winning a championship in a while. And now, same as Lamar, Lamar Jackson's playoff questions became real this season instead of just something people talk about. So is Kyle Shanahan's issues in these championship games. Third time blowing a lead in a Super Bowl. So that's the good news. There are some teams that have been pillars that are coming down. You have teams like Cincinnati that are also in a flux kind of place because they just paid their quarterback a ton of money, which is fine. We saw Pat Mahomes just go back to back with a ton of money on the cap. But the issue is that the strength of the Cincinnati Bengals has been the strength of that wide receiving core. And that's going to be reduced um, this upcoming year because T. Higgins is a free agent. Now, they might keep T. Higgins, but that might cost them Tyler Boyd. Or they might not keep T. Higgins, they lose T. Higgins, and then they just have Tyler Boyd and Jamar Chase. Either way, it's still a good receiving room. They're still going to be a good team. But you have to ask yourself this question, did we see the best punch from the Joe Burrow Cincinnati Bengals extremely early in his career? That wouldn't be, a, that wouldn't be the first time something like that has happened. So while the trees and the path is clearing – for the Cleveland Browns to put themselves in one of those slots. The bad news is that there is a new boogeyman, right? Tom Brady steps away. That boogeyman is gone. Enter newer, scarier, more athletic, terrifying boogeyman, Pat Mahomes. In this year, in the Super Bowl he got previous, like these two Super Bowls to me, solidify Pat Mahomes in his boogeyman status because nobody thought that Pat would be a two-time champion going into the playoffs two years ago in 2024. 
right? Like, if I would have asked you in 2022, do you think Pat would be a two-time back-to-back champion, well, three-time and a back-to-back champion in 2024, you would have left. They just lost Tyreek Hill. They have their best receiver is Juju Smith-Schuster. There's no way. And then they won that championship. Okay, cool. Then everybody forgot that they won that championship this year, and then they went ahead and won it because they have Pat Mahomes, and Pat Mahomes is a certified boogeyman. But that boogeyman status doesn't exist for no reason. It's not this mythological thing that makes Pat Mahomes a boogeyman. One thing that makes him a boogeyman is his reputation as a football player. The other thing uh, that makes Pat Mahomes a boogeyman is the pressure his reputation as a football player automatically puts on every team that plays them. Because the first thing that always is said when you play the Kansas City Chiefs, the first thing that will be written in a chat if the Browns play the Kansas City Chiefs will be this. You can't let the Chiefs hang around. And that's true. You cannot let the Kansas City Chiefs hang around. We saw what happened. This whole playoff was an example of why you don't want to let the Chiefs hang around. They hung around versus Buffalo. They beat Buffalo. They hung around versus Baltimore. They beat Buffalo. I mean, they beat Baltimore. They hung around versus San Francisco. They beat San Francisco. That phrase doesn't exist for no reason. But that phrase, paradoxically, is part of the reason that that phrase is true. Because the knowledge that you can't Let the Chiefs hang around, that they are a zombie, they are never dead, is also what puts the pressure on every team that plays them automatically. It makes teams do one of two things. Oh, my God, we're playing Pat Mahomes. We cannot let the Chiefs hang around. We have a three-point lead. You know what we got to do? We got to press. We got to get some big plays, and we have to score. And that's exactly what the Baltimore Ravens did. They pressed. They tried to score big, and they couldn't because that defense is incredible for the Kansas City Chiefs. Also very underrated how good that defense has been all year. But that defense, and that secondary especially, is incredible for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Ravens were unsuccessful trying to put the pressure on them, trying to score points. Kansas City Chiefs continued to stick around, won the game. Okay, so you see that and you go, okay, well, you know what to beat the Kansas City Chiefs instead of playing into their game, instead of playing into the pressure, instead of thinking that you got to score a million points, let's just play ultra conservative. Let's get a lead and sit on it. That's what the Buffalo Bills tried to do until they ran a fake punt in the fourth quarter. And... <laughs> Well, they lost that game too. There's no one way to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. The phrase, you can't let the Kansas City Chiefs hang around, such a easier than it's such a thing that's easier said than done. Right? It's easy to say the can't you can't let the Chiefs hang around. It's harder to not have, let it happen because they have a great quarterback, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. They have one of the greatest tight ends of all time. And They have a great defense. Those kind of teams, hard to put away. There's no one easy way to go about it. That's why they win a lot of games in Kansas City. What you have to hope for when you play Kansas City is that you get a break and you run with it. Right? You run with it. And it's interesting that I say that because when I think about the Browns playing them, I could think of those breaks. But even before I even get to the Browns playing them, I can think of times recently where they gave a team a break, but that team didn't make them pay for it, right? Um, You know, and to be fair, the Kansas City Chiefs do give teams a lot of breaks, including in this Super Bowl, right? They got that holding penalty on that last drive. um, And, that looked like it was going to be enough for San Francisco to run away with it, right? They were going to score a touchdown and then get away with the game, with the victory. But then I think they missed the extra point after that. Or they didn't score a touchdown. Either way, 
they didn't fully capitalize on the break that they got. And it bit them in the ass. When the Bengals beat the Chiefs, here's the thing that they did do. They got a, the Chiefs gave them a break, and then the Bengals ran with it. Both times they beat the Chiefs. That's what they did well with them, right? The last time that they lost to the Chiefs, the Chiefs gave them a break. Gave them a lead. Bengals didn't run away with it. Bengals didn't capitalize on every aspect of it. And boom, Chiefs came back one. By this much, but one. They did it. Think about when the Browns played the Kansas City Chiefs. 2020, you get a break. Pat Mahomes doesn't play for the whole fourth quarter. And then the backup throws an interception. Chad Henney throws an interception. You have a drive right there to take the lead, to put the game almost out of reach in the fourth quarter. I believe you get one first down, and then you punt. And then the Chiefs beat you by this much. Even when Pat ain't out there. Even when the break is that Pat not on the field, Pat still got you. 2021. Browns go up convincingly early in that game versus Kansas City. Looks like it's going to be a great year. The Browns are going to start off beating the Kansas City Chiefs. Then we give the Chiefs the breaks. We, we fumble a punt, start playing loose. Boom. They beat you. You can't let them hang around. You also can't let the Kansas City Chiefs gain momentum. You know, there's an old saying out there that prevent defenses prevent you from winning. And I do think that that's true. But why is that true? Well, it goes back to something that I like to talk about a lot, which is how momentum is created in a football game. It's not a magical thing. It's a real thing. But it has a real starting point, right? And how momentum is created in the NFL game or in a football game period is by executing. So if you complete a play for four yards, people feel good about that. And then you complete another play for seven yards, people feel great about that. And all of a sudden, the energy on the offense is up. And all of a sudden, people are executing at a higher level. And all of a sudden, people are making plays. And all of a sudden, you're capable of making better plays. I liken this to a, a combo meter in a fighting game, right? Where if you hit a certain amount of combos, you know, maybe you start with a couple jab, jab punches, but you continue to hit combos. The combos you can hit are larger Then all of a sudden you're able to hit the big play. The reason people say prevent defense prevents you from winning is because it allows the offense to execute. It allows the offense to get a rhythm because when you're in prevent, you're basically saying, I'm going to let you execute but I just don't want you to execute quickly, right? I'm going to let you get 10 yards. I'm going to let you get eight yards. I'm going to let you get 12 yards. I'm going to let you get five yards here. I'm going to let you get 12 yards here. I'm going to let you build up that momentum. I'm going to let you build up that energy. And what I think is short-sighted about this approach is it's a underestimate of the consequences of allowing a team to execute. Because when people think about this, they think about it, analytically where they're like okay well we're only allowing five yard chunks and that's going to kill the clock and that's going to slow time down and that's going to be better for us and they're not going to be able to get anything over top because we're only allowing the five yard chunks and that on paper might be a strategy that makes a ton of sense but the reason that doesn't work in practice is because what you're actually doing in the context of how football works is you're allowing a team to execute which means, yeah, they're getting five-yard chunks here, seven-yard chunks here, but they're also getting confidence. They're also getting energy. And that means that they're going to be able to execute more difficult plays easier than they have all game. It's a reason why two-minute offenses are always like more smooth and better for almost every team in the NFL because two-minute offenses and two-minute defenses, they allow you to execute which means you get some rhythm, you get some momentum going, you get some confidence going, all of a sudden, guys are playing better football. Prevent prevents you from winning because it allows teams to execute, which allows them to create energy, which is allows teams to create opportunities to make more difficult plays. And it has the opposite effect 
on your defense because when you're allowing other teams to execute, you're kind of telling your defense to take the gas off, right? To take their foot off the pedal, which means they're going to be less aggressive, which means that they're not going to be playing with that same energy. And what is actually happening, right, is that the defense's confidence and energy is going down while you play prevent. And the offense's energy and confidence is slowly rising up. It's why it's a bad strategy. It makes sense on paper, but football is a people game, and that's a people element that people underestimate. And that exact thing happened in this game versus the 49ers. Kansas City Chiefs, two minutes left. 49ers have been destroying the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line all game. Been destroying them. Penny had no time to throw the ball. What does Steve Wilkes do for the 49ers? Does he blitz him? Does he keep the pressure? No. He says, I don't want to give up everything in one play. I'm going to give up small chunks here. Small chunks there. We're going to play pre-family. Small chunks. Small chunks. Small chunks. We're going to let him execute. We're going to let Pat Mahomes execute. We're going to let Pat Mahomes execute. Gain confidence. We're going to let Pat Mahomes get in the rhythm. And just like that, Pat gets in the field goal range, kicks the field goal, puts it in overtime. Then what happens in overtime? You get the field goal? Okay. We just got to get a stop. Do they come out, play super aggressive? Some plays they did. They went zero on one play. But it was too late. It was too late by the time the game got to overtime. Because you had let the last two minutes go by and allowed one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time to gain confidence. And now, if we're looking at this like a meter, right, like a fighting, a meter in a fighting game, you don't let Pat Mahomes hit all the, the easy combos. And now he can chain together that little 10 button combo on you at the end of the game. And boom, next thing you know, Miko Harmon is catching the game winning touchdown and you are sitting there with the sad face. On the sidelines. Prevent defense prevents you from winning. When you play the Kansas City Chiefs, all of these things are in your head. You want to be more aggressive, but you don't want to be so aggressive that you let Pat make a play and get get momentum. But you don't want to be so inaggressive that you allow Pat to get play to make plays and, and, and create momentum. The fact is that Pat Mahomes' existence puts every team that he plays in a bind, and that's why it seems like he got mind control over some of these teams or that it, it just works for Pat Mahomes because, well, he's at that point. He's a certified boogeyman. Now, speaking of quarterbacks, there's a big question in the room about the Browns quarterback, right? Before, before we even talk about beating Pat Mahomes, I mean, your quarterback's a big part of the equation of that, right? And Deshaun Watson needs to prove that he's good enough to beat Pat Mahomes, that he's good enough to be somebody who can compete with Pat Mahomes. Look at the list of guys who beat Pat Mahomes in the playoffs. It's like Joe Burrow and it's Tom Brady. Ain't no average person doing that, right? Ain't no average quarterback beating Pat in the playoffs. So if you want to beat Pat in the playoffs, you got to be playing at that level. The question with Deshaun is, can he get there? Some people are adamant that he was at that point at one time, despite the fact that he's never beat Pat in the playoffs. Some people are adamant that he will never come close to that. Honestly, it can go either way. On one hand, Watson is a talented quarterback who has an impressive NFL resume up to 2020 um, and who's still, what, 28 years old. It is absolutely possible that things click for him in Cleveland with that roster, that team, and things go well for him. On the other hand, Deshaun Watson is a 28-year-old quarterback who hasn't had a great season since he was 26. He's missed a lot of football. And, well, the football that he's played has been inconsistent. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. This year in 2023, I think the sample was fine. I thought he played good football in 2023. Didn't play any, like, he didn't blow you away in any games, but played good enough football to win, and I thought was critical in every play, every win that he got this season um, in him being out there. But he needs to stay healthy. He needs game reps. He needs to play consecutive games. Right now, as a Cleveland Brown, he hasn't started more than six games in a row. 
I mean, you got to go from that to beating Pat Mahomes. That's a far climb for Deshaun Watson. All in all, your best bet as an organization when it comes to long-term planning, as a football team, when it comes to playing the Chiefs in a game, and as everything else when it comes to the Chiefs, I think the, the, the key is to be aggressive. Don't let the Kansas City Chiefs take you out of your game. Be aggressive. But that's my Monday morning thought about the Super Bowl, about the Cleveland Browns, and about could the Cleveland Browns get past the Kansas City Chiefs. And I don't have a definitive answer on that. I think anybody who does is just kind of projecting. Um, but I do say, think I what I can do, my bad, is lay out the path that the Browns need to follow in order to be a team that can seriously do something to Pat Mahomes. And all of you can answer or ask yourself during the season, is this going to be good enough to do that? Because unless you get very fortunate and somebody eliminates Pat Mahomes before you play him, you're probably going to have to get past Pat. And that's probably the most difficult thing in football to do currently but that's my thoughts let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below y'all have a great day have a better night peace